Torch Trust, Sight Loss 101, in conversation with Jan Turner. Hello and welcome to this episode of Sight Loss 101, where I have the chance to hear the stories of folk who are experiencing sight loss um, to help me to understand what it's like to live in their shoes. Today I have the great pleasure of having Jan Turner with us, who's been involved with Torch Trust for many, many years, which I'm sure we'll hear something about. Uh, So Jan, big welcome to you. And and really, I suppose to start with, just... um, to hear what, when did your sight loss journey begin? As far as I know, it was at birth. Um, I was actually born a triplet, although the other two babies, two girls as well, didn't survive. One died hours after birth and the other one lived for six weeks. And in those days, they thought it was a good idea to put people out on the balcony to get fresh air. And we were put out on the balcony um, and uh, the the um, the other girl, she caught pneumonia and unfortunately oh. died. But um, I was in an oxygen tent because I was only two pound twelve at birth. Hmm. So I was put into an oxygen tent, and that's what they they did apparently mix too much light with the oxygen. Gosh, that's quite a traumatic um, beginning to your life, Jen. Yes, it was rather. Um, But of course, my mum knew, my mum and dad knew more about that than uh, than me. Um, And there is a tale in the family that um, I was a very bad sleeper. And because I didn't sleep very well and had to be fed hourly, um, my dad, who worked for the railways at that time, um, overslept and, and lost his job over it. So, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after that, um, I was very, very fortunate in the parents I had, excellent parents, who let me do as much as I could uh, right from the beginning. I remember playing outside on my scooter and scooting with one foot along the wall while I rode my scooter. Wow. Um, I, I remember that. And um, and so, yeah, my, and I played out with friends and everything. And, and so that was that was really good for me because it gave me confidence. And uh, yeah, it gave me confidence in mobility, I think. Yeah, that's fascinating. Jan, I wonder if somebody who has um, had sight loss and, and experienced blindness all your life what, what would you say to folk as there are increasing numbers of people as as you know population gets older who are losing their sight um as they get older what what would you say, say to them what would your message be to them well i think it's it's much harder for people who lose their sight in later life but my message would be get all the help you can from wherever you can um, and and it is possible to remain independent and stay independent. So you can um, you can learn to do things gradually. You can still go out um, with assistance. You can learn mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can live a, a very normal life. So, 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 Jan, I've spoken to a couple of people um, who are blind and, and some have absolutely no sight, some have some light perception. Do, do you have any? Um, no, I have no sight, no light perception. Nothing at all? No. Yeah. I did do until I was about nine. I had light perception. Mm-hmm. And then I was, I was running and I crashed into a tree. And from oh. that moment, it went. Oh, gosh. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I used to love sport as a child. I, I, I went to um, special school. Uh-huh. Um, and for me, um, it was a good thing for me to do that because I could do, um, you know, sports and that type of thing. Whereas when children go to mainstream school, as they do nowadays, mm. they can't really compete with sighted um, no. friends in no. the way of sport and that sort of thing. So what, what sports did you do? I'm fascinated to know. What I, I did. High, I loved high jump. I did high jump. Oh, really? Uh, long yeah. jump, uh, running, 
um, yeah, athletics, that sort of thing. I didn't so much like discus and that. I did try it, but I wasn't keen on that sort of thing. Okay. But certainly high jump and long, long jump and running, I enjoyed very much. Fantastic. Bless you. Mm. Um, Jan, as you know, I've um, recently become CEO of Torch. Um, mm. And and as a sighted person myself, although I had a few operations on my eyes and I've had glasses since I was very young, I, I really have no concepts from a personal experience of, of sight loss. What, what would some of the things that you would want to say to me about a sighted person as I engage with you as somebody who's blind? What what, what do I need to know? What would um, what, what helps you in terms of um, you know knowing that I understand certain things? Um, if you're walking with me, I'd rather you tell me when the steps are there up and down so that, you know, we don't trip over them. That's one thing. Um, another thing really is that the most important thing is um, just treat me as a person and not mm. as a blind person. Yeah. Um, I expect some of your other interviewees have said that. Um, so, yeah, so... Because because of me being born blind, really I've um, de I've developed a, my personhood as a as a blind person. So I'm a person first, if you see what I mean, and blind second. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've I've um, I mean I've there's the interesting thing. It's how we define people. You know, some people define people by their job or you know, by by what experiences they've had. I mean, I've had two children, so I'm um, I'm a mum. Yeah. Grown up children they are, but now I'm a grandmother. Yeah. And I've got nine grandchildren and and one great grandchild. Yeah. So, you know that that defines me just as much, really, as my blindness. Also, my faith defines me as well, as a Christian. You know, that's um, really important to me. I'm a practicing Christian. Um, as well as saying I'm a Christian, I I have Jesus in my life every day. And, wow. And how did that and, happen, um, Jan? What was your journey to becoming a Christian? Um, I, I actually became a Christian through Torch. Um, I lived in Brighton when Torch was at what is now or was now was a little torch in Hurstpear Point, mm -hmm. and my fa father worked in Crawley as a builder. And after college, when I was nineteen, um, I, well, I wrote I wasn't a Christian. I wrote to Mum and Dad Heath and basically said that um, I just left college, and I'm sure you would want my help, as as uh, teenagers do. And um, I went to Torch to help, and I was absolutely amazed by Mum Heath praying before she wrote any letters to people. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, why do you pray before um, that you write the letters? So she said, well, because I want God's guidance. So I said, well, yeah, but if you didn't pray, you'd write double the amount of letters, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she guided me along with um, Dad Heath as well, but mainly her, she guided me. And I realised that as I met people who came through Torch Store, um, they had something that I didn't have. Mm. And it was a relationship with Jesus. Mm. And so when I was 19, I asked Jesus into my life. Wow. So that's how I became a Christian, as I say, through Torch. And um, I've used Torch services ever since then. And, and then I've worked for, for Torch as well. Um, so, yeah, Torch has played quite a key part in my life. Wow. And, and Jan, how have you – that's lovely to hear. Thank you. And, and how have um, you sort of reconciled your faith and your blindness? Um, I – actually believe that we are made in the image of God and that God can use me and does use me as a blind person just as much as he would if I were a sighted person. And so I don't, because um, I've grown up as a blind person, I don't have any resentment 
about me not having sight mm. because I believe I'm just as valuable to God without sight as, as with sight. If I had sight, that it wouldn't, it wouldn't make uh, any difference at all. So, but I'm fortunate in that. And I do recognize that those people who go blind in later life, it's like a bereavement for them. And so they go through all those stages of bereavement mm. uh, that's normal. And one of those might well be anger and resentment, yeah. which I could quite understand. Yeah. And, and can you articulate something about what um, being a Christian, has, what difference it has made to your life? Oh, um, well, it makes a difference to me every single day of my life. Um, it because because of having Jesus with me by my side, living alongside me, living within me, and so that makes a lot of difference in my life, and it and it um, guides the things that I do in mm. life. Um, I'm fully involved in in the local church. Um, which I wouldn't be if I weren't a practicing Christian. Um, I do say practicing Christian because so many people, you know, if they're asked on a form or, or in conversation if what religion they are, they say Christian. But if they're not practicing as a Christian, that, that makes a difference. But because I practice as a Christian each day, um, and I know, you know, when I do things wrong, I can come to the Lord for forgiveness. Um, and, and my relationship with Jesus is growing every day. Wow. And, and some of the books I read, like I've, I've been reading books from Torch for quite a long while. Yeah. Um, and, and they help me. And reading the Bible, um, I read my Bible on a, um, a Braille note taker. Mm -hmm. So I read the Bible and I've got an audio Bible as well. So I'm very fortunate in that I do have the Bible available to me and that makes a difference too. Yeah. And, and Jan, just lastly, are there any particular resources, books or anything that, that have helped you particularly that, that you'd like to mention that might help other people? Um. I, I've got a lot out of one of the books, the Rick Warren books, you know, The Purpose Driven Life. Yeah. Um, I got a lot out of that book. Um, but I do find I, I get out a lot out of um, most, you know, I get something from most of the books that I read. Um, and my favourite passage of, of uh, scripture is the one in Ephesians that says that God can do more than we can ask or imagine yeah. because um, just, I, I don't, I think you might have, have perhaps read in on a previous torch, but um, at one stage in my life, I was the wheelchair user and then God miraculously healed me. And that was a key passage of scripture at that time. So wow. that's, I hadn't, Jan, I hadn't heard that story. Do you mind just briefly telling us what um, Oh, no, no, happened? not at all. Um, well, I had a, I had a bad back. Um, my children were quite young then. My, my son was five and my daughter was nine. And I bent down. I, w I worked at Torch in, you know, in school time, at school term time and school hours. And I went home with my husband who also worked for Torch. And I bent down and my, and my back sort of clicked. Anyway, I spent a lot of time in hospital, mm. including having plaster of Paris from my neck down to my, past my hips. Gosh. And, and then um, uh, basically uh, I had it off and I couldn't walk. So I used a wheelchair. I used to control my wheelchair with my left hand and, and stick along with my right hand and yeah. so uh, i used to do that i think i'm a quite a determined person <laughs> it sounds like I, it. I think people who are enemies might call me stubborn but <laughs> <laughs> anyway um and then i was at my we were at my friend's house for christmas and um 
we we went to bed. It was a boxing day, and um, I was just thinking. I wasn't thinking anything particularly. I wasn't even praying particularly. And then all of a sudden, I felt as if how I used to feel before I used my wheelchair. So I got up and, and I was amazed and I thought, well, I mean, I could walk a teeny bit with a frame or holding onto furniture, but, but no distance at all. And so I, I thought, well, I'll do something I haven't done for more than 20 years. So I jumped up and down. <laughs> And then I said, I thought to myself, I'll do something else. So I bent over and touched my toes. And then um, I, I was, I mean, I couldn't, I could walk. So I went and alerted my friend and, and Dan and I told them. And then, so then we, we went back to bed and, and the next day it was just the same. And I was still, could, I could still walk. Mm. So, and now I, I go on long walks and I love walking. It's one of my hobbies, really. Mm. And so that, that's, that's the story. And so even without prayer, or, or I don't really know what, for what reason, um, but the Lord healed me. And wow. so that was amazing. Wow. That's a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing it. It, it, it is amazing, isn't it? I, I once had a... I think where actually God healed something with my eyes for a period. Um, I was living in the middle of Africa, miles and miles, thousands of miles from an optician, and my glasses broke. Um, and I, I just had to carry on. And I realized six months later when I got home and my mum at the airport said to me, where's your glasses? Um, that um, the, uh, the Lord had healed my, my eyes for that time. And Marvellous. It lasted a couple of years um, into when I became a student, and, and then I had to start wearing glasses again. So, hmm. um, you know, I, I guess there's no reasoning in some ways, is there? We just have to accept these things as a gift when they're given. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Jan, thank you so much. This has been a real joy. I look forward, when we can, to... Uh, coming and meeting you and maybe going for a walk together because that's one of my favorite things to do as well yeah that would be great i look forward to it bless you jan thank you thank so you much. very much god bless bye-bye bye-bye thank you for joining us in sight loss 101 for more information on torch call 01858 438 260